Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at surviving without a DVD drive. So some of the new Macs, the MacBook Airs and the Mac Minis, come without an optical drive. So you have no way of using DVDs or CDs with those Macs. And probably there's more to come. More laptops probably won't have these optical drives. And in the future, who knows, we could be seeing an entire Mac line that doesn't have optical drives. So what do you do if you don't have one? So one of your first concerns may be how do you get software? Well originally of course software came on physical media. Floppy disks, then CDs, then DVDs. But now most software is downloaded. And the Mac App Store of course makes that very easy. But third party software was always pretty easy to download from the internet. It's been that way for more than a decade. But even the big box software, stuff from Adobe and Microsoft, can now be downloaded from their websites rather than purchasing physical media. So there's really nothing that you can't get by downloading over the internet. You don't need to have an optical drive to get software anymore. Your next concern may be media, getting music and video into your Mac. Now we've had lots of years, about a decade, where we could basically rip our CDs into MP3s and put them on our Macs. So for the most part this isn't a problem anymore. And all new music is of course available online. So purchasing online either through iTunes or using a service where you can subscribe to it, like say Spotify, uh, seems to now be the way that music is going. So you don't really need the physical media for music anymore either. Video is kind of the same way. A lot of video can now be done online. Services like Netflix and Amazon Prime allow you to watch stuff uh, online and you don't have to have the DVD. And iTunes you can rent and purchase videos as well. Now how about archiving and storing data and transferring data from different computers not on the same network? Well the best way to do that now is for small amounts of data with USB flash drives. Now even a cheap small USB flash drive can hold a lot more than a DVD can and it's much quicker to write to and read to and can be reused. Uh, DVDs usually can't unless you have a DVD rewritable and it's much easier to use a USB flash drive for that. For larger things like say archiving lots of files, say you want to archive your old videos or uh, old photos, things like that, you can do that on an external drive. External drives are very cheap to get now too. For 100 bucks, you can get about a terabyte uh, which is way more than you can hold even for, with a box full of CDs or DVDs. So uh, getting an external drive to archive things to might be a good idea. And optical media really wasn't good for this anyway. After about 10 years some optical media starts to degrade. I've got uh, a bunch of old CDs. 10 years old and now can't be read by anything. You can actually see the cracks in the media. One thing DVDs were used for is to be able to show video to people uh, that are not sitting around your computer. You would burn a bunch of video to a DVD and then sit comfortably in your living room and watch it through your DVD player on the television. Well this could be done now in a variety of different ways. A cheap way for instance is to get a $99 Apple TV, hook that up to your television and then you can stream video from your Macs right to the TV. You could do it in high definition, something DVDs couldn't do before. You could also share things online so you can send things to services like YouTube. You can even make things private on YouTube so only your friends and family can see your vacation videos. Now if you still need to use an optical drive for something there are two things you should know about. The first is that you can share an optical drive on another computer on your network. So say you keep around an old iMac or Mac Mini that's got a DVD drive in it. You can actually access the DVD on another Mac, say a MacBook Air on that same network. See episode 591 to see how that's done. And of course you always have the option to purchase an external optical drive. Apple's got one for about a hundred bucks. There are even some cheaper third party ones. They just plug in via USB and you've got all the functionality there. This is actually a really cool thing because then you could still say rip music and movies onto your MacBook Air but then when you travel you're not taking the weight of an optical drive that you're not going to use with you and carrying it around everywhere. So whether you like it or not I'm certain that we're heading to a future that doesn't include optical drives in our computers so it's important to get to know how to get along without them. Till next time, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.